Exonucleases degrade a DNA from its ends. Thus, a circular and undamaged DNA molecule is immune to the action of these enzymes. There are a large number of enzymes that are nonspecific exonucleases and can be used to degrade DNA in an RNA sample. Others will also degrade RNA. There is extensive diversity within the exonucleases about what types of ends they'll initiate on and which direction they will go. This chart is from NEB, and you can look up these details if you need for an exo ever crops up. I will describe what the different column headers mean. When it says initiates on DNA with a 5' extension, the sort of end it is referring to is the products one gets from many restriction enzymes like BAMH1. One that initiates on 3' extension similarly can act on the ends of a DNA cut by a restriction enzyme such as PSD1 and many of the two cutters. Blunt ends can result from restriction digestion or the ends of PCR products. For example, ECHOR5 leaves no sticky ends and some exonucleases will employ this while others won't. Some enzymes can operate on NICs while others don't. A NIC is when one side of the DNA is broken into two molecules. All the atoms, including the 5' phosphate, are present in the NIC, but the atoms are just not fully attached. Again, it is the bond in green that is broken in a NIC. Some exos require a 5' phosphate. A DNA would lack 5' phosphate if it is synthesized chemically or if it was treated with a phosphatase. Because the 5' ends of a PCR product are the actual atoms that were in the oligos, not just a copy, the ends of a PCR product similarly will lack 5' phosphates. Phosphates can be re-added with a kinase. Some exos remove bases in the 5' to 3' direction, while others act in the 3' to 5' direction. Some require double-stranded DNA, while some require single-stranded DNA, and some will work on either. Exonucleases have many popular uses, including the Gibson method of DNA assembly. Here's a very traditional example of using an exonuclease to create a blunt sticky end. First, the DNA is cleaved with BAMH1, which leaves behind 5' 4' base pair extensions. The fragments are then treated with mung bean nuclease that cleaves single-stranded DNAs exclusively. The result is a blunt-ended DNA that can be ligated to other blunt ends, such as those generated by ECHOR5. In a more modern example, you can use an exonuclease to convert a PCR product back into a single-stranded oligo. A 5' phosphate is added to just one of the two oligos used for PCR. The resulting PCR products incorporate the oligos, in pink, into the final molecule. Upon treatment with lambda exo that requires a 5' phosphate for initiation, only the strand with the 5' phosphate is degraded, leaving behind a gene-length single-stranded DNA.